Okay, so welcome to the presentation. So you can just kind of go through the slides as I go. So you read the title of the workshop correctly. In about one year, I went from around like 100,000 to like 600,000 total followers. So around 500,000 followers in one year. I was able to start a business selling juggling balls and getting you know, direct revenue from different platforms. So today, pretty much today, this morning, I put um, all the followers I have. So 211,000 on TikTok. Uh, 170,000 on Instagram, 31,000 sub subscribers on YouTube, and Snapchat, which most people don't know about, 350,000 followers. That's, we'll get into that, but that's like kind of an underrated, unknown platform. Um, all, all of that has led to, is from 100 mil, over 100 million views. And another funny way to think about this is in watch hours. So how many hours did people watch of my content? And if you add it all together, just of my most popular videos, there's, my videos have been watched for over 60 years of human time. So it's kind of funny to think about like one person's whole life basically has been watching my videos. Um, so yes, use this to start a business. And I'm gonna go through everything that I've learned, everything that I know, um, all of my viral strategies, how much money I've made from doing this and how I plan to scale. And you can take all of it. I'm throwing out everything here. And the reason I'm doing that, you might say like, well, why are you doing that? Isn't this like, you know, business is supposed to be competitive. Aren't you supposed to keep things secret? And it will increase competition. But the reason I'm doing this is because this isn't a zero sum game. So juggling in Europe, like the EJC is a 4,000 person convention. The IJA is a 600 person convention. So in the worst case scenario, we have at least the potential to pretty much 8X how big juggling is. And when that happens, all of us win. Um, just to think about this in a different way, like, how much do you think the best juggling coach in the world gets paid versus how much the best boxing coach in the world gets paid? Night and day difference. And that's kind of just arbitrary. Like pickleball was a sport 10 years ago, the best coaches in the world probably didn't get paid that much. But now since pickleball all of a sudden for no particular reason got really popular, now they make a lot more. And so I think the same thing really could happen with juggling if we all do our part in actually spreading it. And so I think we will all win if we all post better videos. So that's why I'm giving all of that. So I have stake in all of your success. Yes. And let's, let's give it up. <laughs> let's give it up for juggling. Um, so now let's begin. So the reason I started this is because I was in my dorm room at college thinking like, okay, well, pretty much everyone here is going to get a job unless they come up with some other idea. So I was like, okay, what other idea could I come up with? So I kind of got into really into entrepreneurship. I tried a bunch of different things. I tried drop shipping. I tried a print on demand business. Uh, varying success, I made you know probably a thousand dollars combined from all of those different side hustles. But then I really thought, okay, well, what is something that I know I'm for sure good at? And juggling was what came to mind. Um, and I learned about this concept called leverage, which is basically, simply put, it's the difference between your inputs and your outputs. So if you have a really high leverage activity, you can input something and get way more out of it than if you have a low leverage activity where you input something you get that thing out of it. So this is why entrepreneurs hate jobs. The idea of a job is because it's a very low leverage, unscalable activity. The, the best you can really hope for with like a career path is, you know, slowly getting raises over time versus something like social media. You can post, you know, a sponsored video and that can get a thousand views versus if you have a really big audience, you can post the same exact sponsored video and it can get a million, 10 million views. And so the, Ability to just instantly get scale like that and reach people at no marginal cost is really the whole idea behind pursuing content as, an, as a business strategy. Um, and so even if it's not passive, although in the long term you can find more passive ways, I believe, it's definitely scalable at a way faster rate than a job could be. You couldn't scale 10x how much you're making in one year with a job. With content, you could. It's hard, but it's conceivable. Um, oh, okay, and so then, there's like sort of four forms of leverage that I think about when I go into this. So there's um, labor, which is the hardest form of leverage to employ, like because it's permission based, you have to get someone else to agree to do what you want. There's capital, which is you take someone else's money that you borrow, you invest it, and then you get some back. And then there's the 
And so the problem with those two is they're both permission-based. So you have to get permission with whoever you're dealing with to get those forms of leverage. But the two newest forms of leverage are code and content. So the reason these are so good is because they're both examples where you can reach people at no marginal cost. So content, you can reach an extra million people for no extra expense to yourself. Or code, you can create a software that saves everyone in the world 10 minutes and it's no marginal cost to you to, for another person to use that piece of software. So that's where I started. I started with content because that was pretty much the only thing I could do. I didn't have money to employ people. I didn't have people I could borrow money from. Um, and I don't know how to code. So I was like, but I could post a video to TikTok, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, and if you're on this slide, slide uh, 26, you could see one of my first videos um, <laughs> where if it loads well, we'll see. But this was just what the earliest possible days of my content looks like. It's just me literally clicking the button record, stepping back from the camera, juggling, and then coming back, clicking stop. And this is when I just was posting, had no idea what I was doing. And this video got like a thousand views on TikTok, I think. Um, and now my videos consistently get at least 20K views across all platforms, and some even get millions. Um, and so here's my framework so you can steal this and go viral. So the algorithm is decided by different metrics, right? You, it's hard, like, you think of the algorithm as like, oh, it's kind of just luck. But no, it tracks very specific things. And you, the whole point is kind of to play into all of those things. So if we think about it, there's you know, the first three seconds is the person still watching. That's the hook. So that's measured by the algorithm. They see what percent of people are still watching after three seconds. Then you have retention rate, which is how long do people stay till the, like, do people stay all the way till the end of the video? If they do, that's high retention rate, and that's good. Then you have how many shares does your video have? How many comments does it have? How many saves does it have? And how many likes? And pretty much other than that, there's nothing else you can really play into the algorithm to make it a better video and get it more views. So this is a completely different way of you know, making good videos. Like making good videos on social media is a completely different game than making like a good act or something like that. Because a good, a routine, you could start with like really slow and people can't scroll past your routine. You know what I mean? <laughs> if they're on stage, they're watching pretty much the whole way. And so you can set it up really differently. But with social media, you need to keep the person because they can just instantly scroll. So that's pretty much, we'll go through these one by one. but. Fundamentally, algorithms have changed. So like YouTube, when it first began, it was so based on like you could build up a fan base of subscribers and you would just always get views on every single video. Now, social media platforms are a lot more interest based. So it's way more on like if you post a video that's good on TikTok, especially like you could have zero followers and instantly get a one million video, like a, a video with one million views because it's a good video and people are interested in it. So you don't need it's kind of a a good thing and a bad thing. Because on the one hand, just because you build an audience doesn't mean it's going to stay with you. So it's a lot harder in that sense. But on the other sense, you can start with no following and get views like today if it's a good video. Um, so this is, you, can, you should probably screenshot this slide and think about this every time you make a video. But slide 31 is just thinking about the actual psychology between, behind each of these metrics that someone can do on a video. So one, will people stop and look at this video for a few seconds? It's hard to remember that behind every person watching a video, or sorry, behind every view, like every number, when that number says like 10 million views, every single person is an actual human being behind that screen that you are trying to keep for as long as possible. So will that person act, who sees that video actually stop and look for a few seconds? Will they stay to the end or rewatch the video? Will they want to share to their story or send to a friend? Uh, will they want to comment and give their opinion? Uh, will they save this for later to come back to? And does this actually provide value and substance? And I think that sixth one is actually one of the most underrated ones because you can get a lot of views, but you might not have fans. And ultimately, if they're, if they're not really a fan, they're pretty much never going to be a customer. So there's kind of two different games you can play. You can play the raw retention hacking view game, or you can play the fans game, and they're they're separate, um, but we'll go through each of those. So what I've learned is the most important thing by far when you make a video is the retention rate. So what that really means is, next slide, the hook is the most important. Because if you don't keep them in the first three seconds, you sure as hell are not going to keep them for the whole minute, because they've already scrolled past by that time. So the most important thing by far is keeping that viewer in the first three seconds of the video. And then it's about setting it up to get them all the way to the end. So. Let's go through these one by one. So hook and retention rate, I'll cover kind of both at the same time. 
Um, and one of my best videos on this was a very simple video. It was just, I'm gonna show you how to juggle in 60 seconds. And then I just threw the balls down and started teaching how to juggle. And I just did a very quick 60 second tutorial on it. And I think that hook, it basically what it does is it gives them a reason to watch the video, right? It, gives, it sets up something that they'll gain from the end of it. They're gonna learn how to juggle three balls. And by the end of it, and they stay till the end because they're not getting the result till the end, right? So if I showed you, oh, here's how to juggle three balls in 60 seconds, but after 30 seconds, I showed how to juggle three balls, and then the next 30 were tricks, well, people already got what they stayed for, so they would just leave probably after 30 seconds. Versus keeping the thing that you are waiting for, the viewers waiting to receive all the way till the very last second, that gets you the highest retention and the most amount of views. So that's how you get higher retention. This example is really, really good. I love to bring this up. It was someone basically reposted the same video twice. It was a video of them doing parkour. And in the first video, they responded to a comment that just said, uh, please do a longer version of your parkour stuff. And they posted that and it got 75K views. And then they reposted the exact same video, but they responded to a comment that said, parkour until you fall into the water. And the second video got 8.2 million views. So basically a 100x increase in views because they actually hinted at a payout towards the end of the video. And that's a very like minor change. So it's like a five word change in text. But one keeps the viewer waiting. Shoot, is this guy gonna like fall in the water when he's doing his parkour at the end? And they are sitting on the edge of their seat waiting to see. The other one, they have no idea what's coming and they just end up skipping. So that's one easy way to hack it. Another really easy way to hack it you've seen this probably a ton on the internet is like the follow the red ball videos and like this is just very simple because uh if you guys don't know how this works it's like you have three juggling balls one of them is like and they're glow balls one of them is like red you start juggling them and then they all turn one color and you say like follow the red ball it's kind of like similar to the uh if they put one ball under a cup and they mix up all the cups and they're like, which one was it? But this works really well on TikTok because, or on any social media platform, because it really retains the person to the end. If the person's like still there three seconds in following that red ball, they're gonna stay all the way to the end to see if they can actually guess it correctly. So that's another way to hack it sort of with a payoff. Um, and that's one form of content that's done like, in terms of just raw views has done really, really, really well for me. There's even one, um, on Instagram right now, like 30 million, it's crazy. Um, so yeah, shares is like the next thing, I, I would say is the next most important thing after retention rate. And the reason is because if you can get a video where the average person shares it with at least one other person, it's pretty much guaranteed to go viral. Because even if it has a terrible retention rate, it's just math. Like if one pe person shares it with two people and they share it with two people, you're at four, eight, et cetera. And any other thing can pretty much be negated. Now, I've noticed this is a little harder with juggling to do because often people share stuff that's like relatable and it's kind of hard to make a relatable juggling video, especially if you're making it for non-jugglers. So I find that the only other tactic to go about this is to do something that's like almost something that's hard to believe unless it was recorded. And here I put an example of Teton Juggler who does this really well. He does like crazy like skiing. He'll throw a club up, do a backflip while skiing and then go back into the three club pattern. And that's just so impossible to believe that like when you see this, like I have to be like, mom, wait, did you just see this? Like, look at what he just did there. And like literally I'm sharing it with people because I'm like, I can't not share that. Um, so that's how I go for shares. Comments, another version of comments is like the guess, the guess the red ball videos. At the end, I'll literally just say comment which ball it is. And that gets more comments, which helps in the algorithm. Um, but I think there's a better way to do this. And I have a, I have a video posted here on it, um, but we should probably watch that after. But basically the video explains that the best way to get more comments is to actually intentionally hide in an extra layer into the video that causes people to comment. So I'll show you, if you go to the slide after this one, um, yeah, I did this accidentally on, for, uh, on, uh, on this first video. So this video that, that uh, was how to juggle in 60 seconds, that's at like 15 million views. And I expected the comments to be like, oh, thanks for teaching me how to juggle or whatever. The two biggest comments that I saw were one, people making ball jokes, okay? And two, people saying that, like people saying like, oh, we're not gonna talk about how he just kicked the ball up without even like saying anything. So I didn't even think about this, but when I was recording the, that how to juggle three balls, I put the other two on the ground. I was like, you start with one and then you pick up your second ball and then you start doing two. 
And I, that was just so normal to me that I didn't even think about it. But a bunch of people were commenting like, wait, he just made that, where did that, that ball even come from? He did it so nonchalantly. Like, so now, once you start to see stuff like that, you can add in that extra layer to the video intentionally to pretty much bait more comments, which I do all the time now. Like, I have a whole series where I do like, um, oh, so if you just take one ball and you throw it like this, and then you get another ball, and I always make sure, instead of you know, pick, taking it out of my pocket or anything like that, to make sure the frame doesn't see my foot in the camera and kick it up. So it looks like the ball is appearing out of nowhere and I'm baiting those like comments of people being like, wait, where did the ball come from? Like, so it's kind of not actually central to the video, but you're getting extra retention for free by doing that. Um, you could watch this one after as well, but this is like an example of me doing it. This one's at like, on YouTube, this one went really viral. It's at like 6 million. Um, but yeah, you're doing that exact idea of like, just kicking it up. So people are like, wait, where did it come from? Um, and adding in those elements. Saves is the next thing that you will try to maximize in the algorithm, like in terms of importance. Um, and really the only thing to do here is to give someone that something would want to rewatch later. So a tutorial is a really good example of this because if you see it, you know, if you see a how to juggle three balls tutorial, but you don't have three balls in front of you right now, you'll probably save that video. So when you get home and you have the three balls, you'll be able to juggle it when you get home and see that tutorial. So that's how I try to get saves pretty much tutorials or something where the person is like confused and they have to come back later to rewatch it for some reason. Um, and last is likes. And if you want to get likes, uh, post pet videos or very emotional videos. That's my only tip. But no, uh, those, those tend to get the most likes. Like if you have a really sad pet or uh, you know, some traumatic you know, care for a pet that was injured, that will get like a ton of likes. Um, it's a little harder with juggling videos, but I think with juggling videos, the main thing is this idea that we were talking about of, com of uh, sorry, fans versus just views. And when you make a video that actually helps someone, that's what will get you likes on a video rather than just a ton of views. So I've had to accept, for example, that like uh, here you see an image of like some of my tutorial videos and like a video that I make for non-jugglers easily can get like hundreds of thousands, but all my tutorial videos on Instagram get like under 20K. And I'm fine with that because I know when someone watches one of those tutorial videos, they typically are watching a longer amount of it and it actually helps someone behind the screen. People, there is actually someone behind the screen that you are helping when you post a tutorial video like that. And that's ultimately who is gonna be a, someone that's gonna be a customer, not someone who watched a guess the ball video, thought it was cool and then scrolled. They don't even know who you are. Like, okay, yeah, so let me just tell you guys a couple of video styles that you can just take from me. Um, so the first one is the follow the ball video. That, this is again, one of the most, I did not come up with this idea. It's been used a lot. And I think we could just pretty much break the internet by continuously posting these. And you know, these one out of every like five or 10 of these gets over a million views for me pretty much. So they're pretty cool. Um, you can watch some of them and see how they're done. But if you wanna know specifically how they're done, I use the K8 balls and then I record having one ball set as red, juggling and then switching it to uh, the fade mode and then that's how I get that effect that I get. Um, a second one you could steal from me is just tutorials, talking ones specifically. These are very quick and simple to record because you can literally just press record. And in one take, like the third, the how to juggle three balls in 60 seconds, it's just one straight take. Probably took me a couple tries to get it. But other than that, like you guys know how to teach how to juggle three balls. So you guys can do that or any other tricks that you think are cool. Um, and the more, the less niche of the trick, the more viewers you will reach. So like the three ball video, as I said, got like 15 million. My video on how to do cross column inverted box did not get 15 million, uh, the talking tutorial. But, but it probably helped a couple specific people a lot. And that's, that also, that to some degree might be more important than, you know, just getting raw views. Another version, which I didn't talk about yet, that has done really well is tutorials where I don't talk. So this is a really interesting stat. On Instagram, I believe it was something like over 70% of the top 100 most popular creators on Instagram do not talk in their videos. So then you're like, wait, why? And the answer is because only 10% of the world speaks English, but there's 4 billion uh, Instagram users, I believe. So like the, all these like, I don't know if you know Zach King, he does these like illusion videos kind of, or like magic, but like this is a very similar thing. So instead of being like, here's how to do cross column inverted box, I just put a tiny bit of text on the screen that said how to do this trick. I started with cross column inverted box and then I do step one and then I go 
like with one ball. And then I do step two, and then step three. And then I would say, combine it all together, and that's, and then the video restarts from the beginning. And so those have done really, really well in terms of just raw views as well, because non-jugglers can watch that. And it's kind of like if a mag magician reveals how a magic trick works. Like a non-magician can be interested in that, even though they're not, learn they're not themselves actually learning the, gonna learn the trick themselves, you know what I mean? Um, so that's done, that's done really well and that's been, and it's been funny too because I thought I was kind of making those as like a joke for non-jugglers to be entertained by and eventually pe jugglers came up to me and they were like, oh, thanks for that tutorial. And I'm like, that helped you? <laughs> I was pretty surprised by that. But yeah, apparently even just, a lot of times people can already do the trick, right? If, they, if it's factory or some other Mills mess, they can do it, but they don't really know how it's broken down. And if you just break it down into the, you know, the two ball version and you know, the two ball with the third throw and then a stop and that, and then you show how it's done, I think that actually does help jugglers learn more because they're like, oh wait, that's how it's done? And then they are able to get it smoother. Um, and another, so then the third one that I would, def, or the fourth one I would say definitely just take from me, this is like the most, the, probably the easiest, quickest way to improve your content is rather than posting, you know, someone, I was talking to a kid earlier that posted like his seven ball, uh, you know, a clip of his seven ball. And I was like, that's good, but like you could easily make this clip better by just doing a progression to seven balls. And if you see uh, this first picture I have on the left here, this is a video where I posted where instead of just do, I could just do a video of seven balls and then stop. But like, there's no substance to that video. Instead, what I did is I started with, I put on the screen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I started with one ball, threw it back and forth, kicked up to a second ball. And then I put a check mark on two when I hit two balls. And then I kicked up a third ball and I put a check mark on three. And then the viewer can instantly see from the beginning of that video what the payout is gonna be. So they can see, shoot, he's gonna, he's gonna do seven balls. So now they have something to stay till the end to see and that increases retention. And that's just like a very simple difference from posting a seven ball video to working up to seven balls in a video and showing that. And as you grow and as I've grown, I've gotten the chance to employ more of these four forms of leverage that I brought up at the beginning. So the first one I've got is labors. And this is, I think the first thing you should get because if you are good at making videos, that should be the, that's the thing you have the comparative advantage in. You should be putting all your time into that rather than, um, rather than you know, trying to put it into editing your own videos or anything like that. So the second I made, uh, I didn't pay anyone until I made money from what I did, but the second I did, editor was the first thing I got so I could pump out content as quickly as possible. This is a pretty well edited video that I have here, but you can watch that later. As well as like my editor will now, like when I do a tutorial video, he'll add in arrows of where each ball is gonna go or add in slow-mo clips. And I literally just record the tutorial, send it to him, and he cuts up the whole thing, slow-mos it, and knows what he's doing. And I have to give, <laughs> oh, oh, and I also have like a guy who does my thumbnails now. So like all the YouTube videos that are coming out, how to juggle shower, how to do Boston mess, how to do the box, all of these now, some other guy handles the thumbnails because that's not my level of expertise. And like that makes a big difference in how many views a video can get if it has a good thumbnail. Um, so I have been lucky enough to find a place to get really cheap editing. I don't think this would be possible if I was paying Americans. So all of my editing has came from Pakistan and it's been great. And so I've left links to the discord if you guys want to use those because like, yeah, it's, it's OP. Um, and then, so yeah, as you get that, and then like the next form of leverage that I'm employing is code. So like I now have a software, um, you can see it here. It, it basically just reposts all my videos for me. So I post to TikTok, and that's the only platform I post to. This software automatically reposts everything that I post to Instagram, um, YouTube Shorts, Snapchat, um, Pinterest even. I didn't even like think to post on Pinterest, but you can set up a workflow to any platform. So once you set it up once, it's there automatically. So I even sold a set of juggling balls from Pinterest. It was like the most random thing, but some guy DM'd me and he was like, dude, what juggling balls do you recommend? And I'm like, these, obviously. Uh, these are the ones I use and sell, so. And he was like, dude, I'll get a set, like those are sick. And then he got them. So I'm like, this, like you should take advantage of as many platforms as possible. And this, plop, this software is like 25 bucks a month. And for me, the return on that has been really, really high. So that's absolutely worth it for me and has saved me a ton of money. 
Um, now, in, this is just going over the financials of everything, how much money I've made. So since December, I've made around 15 grand. And that's pretty much all profit. The juggling balls are the only thing that isn't like 100% profit. So pretty much all of that is profit. And we'll go through each thing. So TikTok, for example, just pays you in direct revenue from how many, based on how many views you get. So that's made, uh, since I started, 12 grand. And in the past week, $900. So since I came to the IJA, I pretty much, I recorded a bunch of Guess the Ball videos, for example, before I got here, like in one session, like one hour, pumped out 30 Guess the Ball videos, and I have them saved, ready to post. So I wake up in the morning, spend you know, a couple minutes posting and putting the music to each video. And like, just to show you, like one of these Guess the Ball videos has made $433. And that took me three minutes in the morning to post and one minute to record that I recorded in a batch. And one dollar per video that I gave to my editor to add in all the text and clip it up for me and stuff. So like, that is like a really good, just in terms of money for amount of time, insane return on that. Um, Instagram is pretty terrible when it comes to, oh yeah, but the thing about TikTok, by the way, is you can only get paid for videos that are over one minute long. That's the one catch. So we've kind of <laughs> designed these guess the ball videos to be exactly one minute and one second. Um, and then when it reposts to YouTube shorts, it cuts off the last one second of the video and reposts us the 60 second video. So then I get both platforms. So they're designed to be exactly at the edge where I can get monetized on one and I can still get views on the other, right? If it was a like one and a half minute video, people would just not watch it. Um, Instagram, the pay is pretty terrible, but if you get a video which just has like a raw just number of views, you can still get paid from like the revenue. So this 34 million view video made me around 1.5 grand. Now that's terrible in terms of the ratio of views to payment, but it's free money pretty much. Snapchat is he heavily underrated. So I've made around 2,700 from Snapchat and the way their monetization works is like, if you just meet the minimum requirements, they give you a, th there's like a chance pretty much that you get $1,000. And so I just have my videos automatically reposting there. And then like only five days out of the month, you have to post a video using like one of the Snapchat features. So like I just, po I just add some like text to like a random video that I post. And then you can just boom, have a chance of making an extra thousand bucks that month. What's yeah. your gear like? Are you just filming from your phone? Do you have lenses? Do you filming from my phone. Um, the only thing I do is for the guess the ball videos, I turn on 60 frames per second. Because I feel like that the smoothness of those videos matters, and I want it to be smooth. Um, and then I'll use uh, cinematic mode. So if I'm outside recording a video, and some people have even that's another example of people commenting something unrelated. But like it makes the background really blurry when you do cinematic mode, and makes you kind of clear. But like if there's something fuzzy, like for example your hair, it'll like kind of glitch a little bit at the edges. And so I got a ton of comments of people being like, "Dude, he's using a green screen," and I'm like. No, I'm not, but okay. <laughs> like, but like, that's just free. Like, it's almost like you kind of can't make a mistake because if you make a mistake, people are going to comment about it and then you get more views. So you could kind of throw in those mistakes intentionally. Um, YouTube, I'm not monetized on yet. I know the, but like I'm going to be by tomorrow, I think, because I'm finally hitting, the, the threshold is like 10 million views, shorts views in like 90 days. So I think I'm going to hit that in the next uh, couple of days. And so I'll report back on that. But as far as I know, the YouTube shorts revenue is pretty bad. It's probably like similar to Instagram. So you really need like millions of views for it to actually mean anything. But YouTube long form can be a lot more, especially depending on what niche you're in. But like the juggling niche will probably pay like two to three dollars per thousand views on like a long form video. So yeah. Um, and then Shopify, this is just like juggling ball sales. And I also have I also have one digital product, which is just like a list of tutorials that I've sold, and that's done 7,800 since November, which is when I started it. Um, and that's probably 80 or 90% profit margins. Uh, and then I did one sponsorship, which I made $500 from. So it was like this app that wanted, uh, it was like this app that had challenges on it, and they were like, oh, we wanted you to post these challenge videos to our app, and then later you can repost them as TikToks. So I was like, get paid to make the TikToks I was normally gonna make anyway, cool. And I just did that, that was $500. So going forward, I think um, I really wanna take more advantage of long form videos and I haven't really at all yet. So I have a lot of tutorials planned out and we'll see what kind of comes up with it. The, I feel like the niche of making videos for entertainment 
like juggling entertainment for non-jugglers is very hard on YouTube. I've rarely seen it done. The best example I think is Josh Horden, but he really isn't in the juggling niche anymore. He's fully turned to like the trick shot niche. And I don't know if that's where I want to go. So not sure if that's what I, what's going to be in store for me. Um, and then the next thing that I have planned going forward is more digital or information based products. So I think a really good method that a lot of creators have used to monetize is just having a Patreon, for example. And all of the people on that is, are just like paying a monthly subscription to whatever it is you have. You know, maybe you come out with your videos earlier on there or whatever. And I think, I think that's a really good method because you don't have to deal with any of the logistics of like the physical product fulfillment, anything like that, the inventory or anything like that. Um, my plan is to make something called school. So it will be like an online juggling hub basically. And it'll have, it'll have like a full course for me of like beginner to advanced, like talking tutorials with juggling. And then like, uh, also a community where people can post, you know, post their videos, ask what should I do differently for this trick, et cetera. And so the idea there again is that you can build that once and it can scale, you know, it, it might not be a good hourly rate at the beginning, but you could get t technically like an infinite number of people in there and it can scale infinitely. So that's my idea with that and we'll see how that goes. But before we end, just remember like when I started, I was posting like, I was posting those really easy videos, but still like pretty much three times a day for one to two months before I had a video really go viral, like hit over a million views. So it will take, it's not like it's just easy but if you, but you came to this workshop and now you guys have a huge advantage on me when I started, cause you actually understand what types of videos have gone viral and what works. So I think if you guys dedicate yourself, you can get there way faster than I did. So yeah. Um, oh, <laughs> and I'll deal with this last thing because this, ha this came up at the last presentation, but if hate comments is like, that is something you will get. So I'll just read to you some, cause I thought these were hilarious. Um, Bro's hairline goes back to 1800. The wind is this man's enemy. This is really cool, and I mean no disrespect, but bro's hairline is clapped. So you will get hate comments if you post videos online, no matter what you do, and that's just part of the that's just part of the job. So if you can't take that, then I you either have to learn to take that and accept it, not read the comments or, but I was gonna say, that I do, you do get hate comments, but honestly, it doesn't even compare to how many positive comments you get. It's way more, especially if you're doing something that's like genuine and honest and you're trying to be a good person. Like, like yeah, you can see the slide, like there are so many people just saying like, that's insane, how did you get this talented, blah, blah, blah. So that's another thing to keep into perspective if you get a negative comment, like, the actual ratio of positive to negative is always so high, but it's like one negative comment will throw people off so hard, but it's like, you remember, you forgot, like you just got 10 positive for that one dude who said your hairline was clapped. Like, so yeah, that's it. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them now or discuss. Yeah.